26 October was the 75th anniversary of accession of Jammu and Kashmir to India. And to talk uh, on this, we have Dr. Karan Singh, who knows Jammu and Kashmir in and out. Dr. Sir, thank you so much for talking to CNN News 18. Uh, 75 years of accession of Jammu and Kashmir to India has completed. Uh, and now on this day, there are various uh, statements is coming out. Uh, you have your own version. Now, from the government side, Kiran Rijiju, the union minister, is saying that uh, Nehru did blunder in that. So how would you react to that? You see, I don't understand what he's saying about Nehru's blunder. Uh, he may be referring to, to a rumor that uh, my father wanted to exceed earlier, but there's no proof about that. At least I haven't seen any proof about it, nor have I read any documents to that effect. What I want to draw your attention to is the letter that my father wrote to Lord Mountbatten in closing the instrument of accession. On the 26th of October, he signed the instrument, but he, he sent that with a letter to uh, Lord Mountbatten. And that gives you a clear understanding of what his thinking was at that time. You should read that letter, it's in my autobiography also, mm -hmm. in which he said that I was wondering which of the two dominions to join, or whether it would be better for my state to stand independent, of course, with good relations to both. That's what he says in his letter on the 26th. So if he had earlier wanted to accede to India, then the letter would not have been like this. Mm. So this, uh, this is going around, I think it's a canard, if you ask me, just to sort of, as if were uh, decry uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, who was, of course, very keen that Jammu Kashmir, she was a Kashmiri himself. But what he did want was also Sheikh Abdullah's uh, support. That was the problem that he had. And uh, that was really one of the main sticking points. But ultimately, Pakistan invaded. They weren't prepared to wait for my father's decision. So once they invaded and they started taking over parts of the state, then my father asked for help mm. to India. India said, look, we can't help you. You're not part of India. Unless you exceed, how can we help you? So he exceeded and they helped and the rest is history. And this, this was the point that he was mentioning, that uh, the time which wasted in the discussions and all, because Nehru wanted uh, the, the views of public of Jammu and Kashmir, uh, but uh, Maharaja Hari Singh was ready to, for the accession. So he was, and that time, uh, this uh, Gilgit Baltistan area had gone to Pakistan. There's nothing to prove that. There's nothing to prove that my father was ready to exceed earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, how, how does he say that? I do, I do have no knowledge about that. But as I said, if he was going to exceed earlier, mm -hmm. then he would not have written this type of letter to Lord Mountbatten. Because he uh, mentioned in his speech, because uh, the minister has uh, given art links of those speeches of Nehru of 1952 and 1948, which he gave in the parliament, where he said uh, that he wanted the, the views of people of Jammu and Kashmir, though Raja was ready for it. What's, I don't know about that, but certainly he wanted, what he wanted really the views of, of Sheikh Abdullah. Because Sheikh Abdullah, he looked upon as the voice of the Kashmiris because of his national conference. And he was the one who had the whole anti-Dogra campaign against us from the year I was born, oddly enough, 1931, he started. And uh, that was the obvious tension between him and my father. And Jawaharlal Nehru obviously supported Sheikh Abdullah. So that was your, your telephone is more active. You have to switch it off before you take an, uh, uh, an interview, remember that. Um, so the thing is that, as I said, I have I, I've read what, what uh, Rijiju has mentioned. I don't think he said that the Maharaja was ready. I don't think he said that. I think all he said, what I read was, this matter had come before us earlier. Mm -hmm. Whatever that means, I don't know what that meant. But he did not, as far as I'm aware, I open to correction, he did not specifically say that the Maharaja was ready for accession. If he said that, then that is an important uh, news. But still it doesn't match with the letter that he wrote to Mountbatten. Mm -hmm. How do you explain that? 
Rijiju, uh, I know Rijiju well. He doesn't know much about Jammu and Kashmir, but he's an intelligent man. I'm sure he's done his homework. And he, he also uh, says that when uh, uh, Nehru had approached the United uh, Nations in this regard, so uh, the article with which he approached uh, United Nation was that uh, it was a land dispute. Otherwise, other uh, other than that, he could have easily used the the uh, the you know the the. Uh, uh, the the Pakistan's uh, unnecessary intervention or uh... that was Maharaja Hari Singh's son speaking exclusively to CNN News 18, reacting to the article that has been written by Union Law Minister Kiran Rijiju on what he calls our Nehruvian blunders as far as Jammu and Kashmir is concerned. Major General Govardhan Singh Jamwal now joins me on this broadcast. Thank you so much for speaking with us, sir, here and taking time out. Uh, how do you react to this entire sequence of events that we are now seeing? The Union Law Minister writing about uh, what exactly led to the accession of Jammu and Kashmir to India and how certain decisions that were taken by the leadership by, back then by Jawaharlal Nehru himself resulted in seven long decades of strife in Jammu and Kashmir. Well, uh, I think uh, Riju is absolutely right. It was Nehru's fault, not only for accession, but for everything else. Because we know his mind, I as a soldier, I have assessed the whole situation from day one. He has faltered at every point, right from the day Muzaffarabad was attacked. You know, the attack on Muzaffarabad was planned before 15th of August. And the attack was, the operation order was signed by Frank Mazarvi, British Commander-in-Chief of Pakistan Army, on 18th of August, and delivered to Brigadier Mbure of Banu Brigade to attack Jammu and Kashmir with 10,000 Lashkar, that means 6,000 for Kashmir, 2,000 via Gulmarg and 2000 via Titwal. This report, Major Unkar Singh Kalkat got in his hand on 20th. He was put house arrest and he escaped on the 18th of October and reached the Defence Minister of Nehru and Nehru was informed on 18th of October that you are going to be attacked by Pakistan on 22nd October. Char din hai kuch karlo. He didn't inform Maharaj Hari Singh. He didn't inform his own congressman who was our Prime Minister uh, Mirchand Mahajan at that time. Those four days would have saved Kashmir, Gilgit, Baltistan, everything. This is only Nehru's fault. Nehru knew it. Nehru searched him. He didn't believe him. Then when attack ho gaya, Chobis ko, Chobis ko thoda, attack to 22nd ko hua. Balki attack to Jammu mein, 18 October, Stambar se shuru the, October mein shuru the. Uh, India never bothered. India did not know that Kashmir was attacked every day. Kathua was attacked. Jammu was attacked by every day from right September. But anyway, October it was a full-fledged attack. And even on 24th, when Brigadier Rajendra Singh told Maharajari Singh personally that uh, it's a very big attack. I have seen 300 lorries, 6,000 people. So immediately rush. Even then, 24th, then Batra was sent Deputy Chief Minister. It was very clear Nehru didn't want it. He wanted only through Abdullah. And may I tell you, I have studied Maharaj Hari Singh very well. He was, he believed in the divine right of kings. He was a king. He was a real king. And uh, he didn't want to go down to Sheikh Abdullah that you help me. Why? He was the Maharaj Nehru should have talked to him. Nehru never wanted to talk to him. And Nehru didn't even bother that Pakistan had already attacked and come up to Uri and even then he was telling him, Batra went the deputy prime minister.